Taliban have decided that gender studies is uh, nonce acceptance, and uh, <laughs> they seem to be right. So let's start with just a clip of what the Taliban are up to. Uh, apparently, they've been finding not just piles and piles of guns, as everyone has been demonstrating, but piles and piles of cash as well that the Americans left behind, which uh, I, I don't know why I'm surprised about at this point. I mean, how much cash are those guns that they're going to just sell and make a huge profit on, which... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's one thing. You can see some representative from the, the United States saying, this makes my blood boil. Yeah. I don't know if we can skip through to the middle here where they've got the cash, because he's literally just got like, bricks and bricks of it. Well, like, this is the same thing that happened in Iraq. Yeah, same situation. Literally pallets there of money. There we go. So you yeah. can see they're the just piles and piles of yeah. cash and him just taking them out. And yeah. it's all $100 bills. Which is doubtless used to just bribe local warlords. Yeah. So, so. That's Your tax is at work. But, uh, so that's the Taliban. And uh, what have they doing with this money? We're buying cell phones and going on Twitter.com. Favorite <coughs> platform of choice. God. And uh, they found this one tweet. So we got the next one. So the only some... platform that will let them on, incidentally. Well, apart from YouTube, apparently. Won't let me on. Won't let Trump on. Do let the Taliban on. Mm. So this lady says, for 8.5 years, I taught at the American University of Afghanistan as a faculty member and academic administrator. I found the first gender studies program in Afghanistan's history there. All our work, dreams, hopes, progress, only to have it snatched away so needlessly. You know, I love having this many white pills on a Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Gender studies in Afghanistan has been shut down. Oh no. Oh, that sucks. Um, and that would be the usual response from people like but us. Th there's a great response at the bottom. The Taliban were willing to fight for their beliefs. You weren't. <laughs> there we yeah, go. That's, right. that's the exactly Taliban, right. Taliban have retweeted this, which is funny. So let's go to the next one. You got the, the Taliban. Hello, I'm from the Taliban. What an intro. <laughs> Gender studies classes teach that paedophilia, open brackets, man-boy love, is a human right. That's Ga true. Gail Rubin, one of the world's leading feminists and founder of gender studies, says that older men having sex with little boys is a human right. This is forbidden by Allah. And the best part is, is apparently the Taliban have been doing their research. So while she was teaching they gender read studies, your books. they actually they actually like brought the books and went through them. And uh, <laughs> they've got the quotes <laughs> to prove it. <laughs> like, were they the students at the school? And after being students at the school at the University of Afghanistan, they were like, right, sod this, I'm off to the Taliban. Okay, so the, these are Gail Rubin, Rubin's words I'm about to read, and I don't stand by them at all. She says, It is harder for most people to sympathize with actual boy lovers. Like communists and homosexuals in the 1950s, boy lovers are so stigmatized that it is difficult to find defenders for their civil liberties, let alone for their erotic orientation. These men have been the victims of a savage and underserved witch hunt. A lot of people will be embarrassed by their collaboration with this persecution. There they were. I sure as hell don't. Imagine that being the hill you're going to die on. You missed out one quote there. Oh, Local police, the FBI, and watchdog postal inspectors have joined to build a huge apparatus whose sole aim is to wipe out the community of men who love underage youth. As if it's a criticism. So I just like, want to salute those men. Uh, uh, the FBI, <laughs> the local police, watchdog, postal inspectors. Good job, lads. And this is why the Taliban outlaw Bakabazi. Yes, um, as mentioned. I mean, we will remember that the, the Taliban are Islamists and... They're right terrible, down. terrible human beings. Well, no, they believe in Islam and therefore they're pedophiles, so let's go to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, being hyper, I'm being hyperbolic there, but Mohammed is the perfect man and he engaged with what we would describe as pedophilia. So, of course, child marriage in Afghanistan is also incredibly high in the rural areas <clears throat> that the Taliban controlled. Yes. And they also allowed it before and they're also now doing it now. So, yes, yes no change. But also we disavow the Taliban because they shoot people. Yeah, but I mean, we're just talking about pedophilia today. So, uh, we're going to the next one. We have, See, if uh, the Taliban were smart, they'd just term it as late-term abortion, wouldn't they? They could do that. So the, the thing here, of course, the, the uh, regime we put in charge covered up uh, the pedophilia of young boys. So again, we're talking about boy loving yep. because the Taliban are only girl loving. So I mean, they've got that girl for them. They, they've illegalized 50% of the pedophilia. Yeah, they're 50% less nonce than the left. And the government we put in charge in Afghanistan. Amazing. And that's the amazing thing. The US regime and the US soldiers there had to just stand by and watch this going on. Yeah, just to be I mean, clear, our position is 0% nonce. Yeah, the law. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not just the law, it's the moral law as well. Yeah, but it's just the thing of like, in the West, we find this repugnant. Go to some uncivilized parts of the world, uh, like such France. as uh, France, Afghanistan, or American university campuses, and uh, the academics have a different opinion. So if we, uh, if we go to the next one here, it turns out the Taliban didn't even put in the worst parts oh, really? of this essay. So this is uh, Gail Rubin, Thinking Sex, Notes for Radical Theory of the Politics of Sexuality. Oh. 
Why does the world need this? It really doesn't. Oh, God. So the context in which she was saying that, because the context is so important and will surely make things better, it doesn't. She says, A new and even tougher federal child pornography bill has just reached the House Senate conference. It removes any requirement that prosecutors must prove that the alleged child pornography was distributed for commercial sale. Wait, is this the Vought position? Uh, Yeah, Uh, this is the one she took in the 80s. Once this bill becomes law, a person merely possessing a nude snapshot of their 17-year-old uh, lover or friend may go to jail for 15 years and be fined $100,000. This bill has passed the house 400 to 1. Based. It's like, okay. And she's uh, she's given an example there of, let's say, uh, there's a relationship between a 17-year-old and another 17-year-old and the 17-year-old becomes 18. And then, sure. you know, that's yeah. Uh, and thing. I'm sure that a judge could make a reasonable judgment if that came up in his courtroom. Yeah, but then she doesn't even give that as the example. So she gives another example to try and make her case. What example does she give? The experiences of art photographer Jacqueline Livingston exemplify the climate created by the child porn panic. An assistant professor of photography at Cornell University, Livingston was fired in 1978 after exhibiting pictures of male nudes which included photographs of her seven-year-old son masturbating. That's the example she gives to justify why she thinks man-boy love should be accepted. And Weird how they make the Taliban look rational. Yeah, this is the part the Taliban left out. Which, mm-hmm. and then we have the last bit here. So she later goes on to confirm what this is all about. Right-wing ideology linking non-familial sex with communism and political weakness is nothing new. During the McCarthy period, Based. Alfred Kinsey and his Institute for Sex Research were attacked for weakening the moral fiber of Americans and rendering them more vulnerable to communist influence. That's her words. I don't know anything about that, but it's probably true. I, I mean, her here advocating for man-boy love uh, being accepted. Yeah, I would say that's going to make you weak at a communist influence. I'm just going to guess that she herself was a communist. Mm. I also love how Afghanistan, the, the Taliban overthrew the communists as well, which is another aspect of all this. But uh, if you're wondering why any of this is important at all, well, this is uh, how Rubin's essay is described in academia. Rubin's 1984 essay, Thinking Sex, is widely regarded as the founding text of gay and lesbian studies, sexuality <sighs> studies, and queer theory. Man, there are so many L's being taken by the left today, I just can't get over it. It's, it's beautiful, isn't it? But the, it's amazing. But there's the thing, I mean, how sickening do you have to get where your founding text is arguing for paedophilia, and then some academic is like, I was teaching this in the Afghan university, and the Taliban are like, yeah, we not knew. anymore, you're not. <laughs> that's, that's why we kicked you out. Like... But this is not in any way new for the left either. Uh, no. Michel Foucault, um, Derrida, and Simone de Beauvoir, apart from Foucault actually being an accused paedophile from one of his friends who saw him getting on with Tunisian boys. Uh, also, they all signed a letter to demand the French government reduce the age of consent in France to 13. And there has been the Labour Party's involvement with the Paedophile Information Exchange, which is a pro-paedophile movement, all through the 70s and 80s It's in a Britain. systemic problem. And in left. Germany, where they were giving a, young boys to paedophiles. I just want to be, just make sure yeah, I'm I know. clear. We're going to go on too long if we do this. The <laughs> then you have Nambler in the United <laughs> States, which was exactly what Gail Rubin is referring to and probably references Nambler in this paper. She does. So just Well, there we go. So yeah, I didn't even need to know, did I? I didn't need to read it to know that, right? So just to be clear, there is a very long and deep link between radical left-wing politics and being pro-pedo. The, Never let it be said there's not. The head of Nambler was also a member of the Communist Party. Yes, he was. States. Hmm. What's she up to, anyway? Apparently she's still an associate professor of anthropology and women's studies at the University of Michigan. So if you're ever visiting the University of Michigan, I mean, keep, take, keep, you know, keep the kids at home. Yeah. Don't take them with yeah, you. Yeah. That's all the advice I've got. But the, the thing in my mind is just like, why would anyone want an American university on their land teaching gender studies if this is the founding text? I mean, I can see why the Taliban are upset about this. I'm surprised more of the world's uh, nations with American universities on their soil are not upset about this. Are you saying that Pakistan might be start reading through their own, the papers? That, right? well, I wouldn't change the culture there. So, well, yeah. uh, Anyway, moving on from Pakistan, Delenta Est. Yeah. So if, uh, in case you're wondering, I mean, this is why some of this is stinging so badly is because the Taliban really do understand what makes the West empty and are prodding at it to point it out to Westerners. So we're going to the next uh, thing here. This is a tweet from Politics for All. Former Manchester Labour councillor Carl Ullersted, who said that males have a right to access to women and girls' toilets, has been charged with indecently assaulting a girl under the age of 16. Pure coincidence, I am sure. Did you also see the uh, We Spa incident update? Uh, we're going to do that in another segment, so right, okay. I'll leave that there for now. Okay. So, um, you going can on- guess where that's going, though. Yeah. So if we go on from this, I just wanted to go through a few of the yeah. Taliban's memes. And you might think this <laughs> is not? self-indulgent, because... 
some of them are interesting. Uh, no, I want to make a point with this, which is their memes are strikingly hurtful to a Westerner who's looking at our own civilization. So here's the first yeah. one, in which they have uh, the meme of... Uh, I can't remember the name of this meme, actually. But you've got the, the guy who's covered in LGBT symbols, communist symbols, Marvel, Pornhub, Facebook, Disney, all behind him. They're like, no, stop indoctrinating children. And then just the Chad Taliban with the Quran. This is their meme. It's how they represent themselves. If we go to the next one, we have uh, another one that this guy's posted. Chat from the Taliban. They brainwashed oh, they, you. They ripped this one off the Christians. I know, right? It's it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, they've got all the like you know Western symbols, and then the Chad Muslim being like, really? That's that's the idea of the yeah. meme. And if we go to the the next one here, we have the Taliban Pepe <laughs> versus the LGBT trans rights McDonald's embassy and the Americans fleeing. That's not fleeing. even wrong, though. That's not even wrong. And then everything we're... about that meme is true. And then we have the last one here. I to use, so let's get the next one up. Look at the. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Just the, the transgender person hanging onto the helicopter. It's just. Carry on. And you got people falling off the plane as well. I mean, they're, 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 they know whole bots here, do they? No. And then you have the last one. For this is from a Taliban account that that Taliban account retweeted. So <laughs> it's uh, Chad Muslims is the framing of. No, so Chad, ta Chad Taliban particularly. Sorry, Chad BTFOing Taliban. other Muslims. So Chad Taliban saying, So guys, I just retook Afghanistan and made it an Islamic Emirate. And then the, the Chad Muslims of the Muslim world being like, A Lamal, based bro, A my Afghan buddies, waving the flag. And then you have the virgin Western Muslims who respond by saying, oh my god, Taliban aren't Muslims. They don't know what Sharia is. Only I know, because I went to Yale. Oh, I saw it on TikTok. Yeah. No, you don't understand. Jihad is under defensive. So th this is their <sighs> memes, and uh, um, they're good. They're, they are, they are uh, very good, what would you call it, uh, psyops. Well, the, you know, the psychological reason, operations. The reason these work is because the left-wing narratives on Islam and the Taliban and things like that are fictional. They don't really have any essential truth to them. And so as soon as the ability to just show an act of Islam through the Taliban lens occurs, it destroys everything that they've said, mm. you know? Because, I, I mean, I've seen, I've heard people saying, oh, yeah, I was in the taxi and my, my taxi driver was from Afghanistan and said he thought the Taliban were great and things like that. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. You know, the but, Western intellectual academic Muslims are full of it. I should, I should point out there are a bunch of other uh, uh, memes from this account which are not striking, but I want to take out the ones that were striking because it's interesting that they're able to talk in that language. Because if we go to the next one here, this mm. is their usual propaganda, in which is just footage of them filming a <laughs> clearly astroturfed protest for women's rights, except the women's rights protest is by women in burqas saying that everything's great now that the Taliban are here. Allahu Akbar. Oh my God. Because the old regime was run by disbelievers and uh, the Taliban here calling, uh, saying, you won't see these women in Zionist media. I mean, this is their usual stuff, right? This is stock Tal Taliban, you know, Islamist propaganda. Yeah, they are right. You won't see those women in Zionist media. And they mean, when they say Zionist, they mean Western media, right? Uh, they, and they, they won't show that because they'll say, well, that's Islamophobic. Also, Real Islam isn't women covered head to turn black robes. But also it's obvious propaganda. Like the way this sure. is set up, the shots, the script, yeah, which he yeah, reads, yeah. Sure. you know, and it's really crap, but their memes aren't. And that's something new that we have to address. So yes. we have the next one here. There's just one more of their memes. And even they've noticed this. So the, the Taliban account, saying, meme made by 10 trillion IQ, here's the minister of memes, and then the <laughs> meme- a minister of memes. And then the, the yeah. post is like White House memes, and it's the intern Saki TikTok, yeah. and then Taliban memes, Sneed memes from 4chan, in, in which they've got the, the redone of them as the Taliban. Unbelievable. But you're completely right about these hurting the mm. West. These genuinely are damaging to Western narratives. Compared to their other propaganda that has no effect on a Western Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Myself. They look ridiculous. Like, oh, look, we've got all our women dressed up in bin bags. Damn Zionists. That's, it's like, yeah. <laughs> no, <whatever>. you, <laughs> A, you sound ridiculous, and B, that's an awful thing to do. The, 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 just to be clear, we're trying to occupy a middle ground b between Taliban and three-year-old transgenders, right? There is a reasonable middle ground there, and we're <laughs> trying to claim it, but it's becoming more difficult, frankly. <laughs> so one of the things I wanted to mention is that because their memes are effective, because, as you mentioned, they reflect parts of reality. I mean, it's not that the Taliban are good or offering anything good, it's no, just they're that they're, evil. their criticism of Western institutions as being devoid of anything meaningful and are entirely unwholesome. Authenticity. Yeah, is, uh, is true. And, um, well, it's, come, it's, it's made some... Americans apparently start joining in with the S posting. So if we go to the next one, we have the, the U Taliban in USA. And if we click on the first image here, this is a meme that the Taliban put out in which they have someone with Black Lives Matter, transracial flag, and communist symbol. Now we have a name for you. What? You're the American Taliban. And then the, the MAGA version, I imagine, is just, yeah, fair enough. 
I'm the American Taliban. And there's some people S posting being like, yeah, why not? This is funny. I mean, it is funny, <laughs> but like, it's, it's not going to win any battles. No, of course not. But it, it's yeah. the funny point of being like, well, there's a reason that they're, they're able to make this meme live. Um, and CNN has a diagnosis. Is it that Western institutions are, are vague? No. No, it's just white supremacists. Oh. White supremacists, praise of the Taliban, causes White House concern. It's like... <sighs> yeah, but you guys can't stop thinking about white supremacists. It's yeah. literally it all day, every day. Like anyone just retweeting it because, you know, they criticize BLM as a white supremacist. Yeah, yeah. that's their take. But uh, it's also because, I mean, just look at the West, okay? So we're going to go through a, some examples. First one being the doggos, the good boys who didn't do nothing. Mm -hmm. The American dogs that were left behind. And the Taliban gave a press conference. They were like, yeah, we fed the dogs. <laughs> all right. Um, the Australians shot the dogs. <laughs> that's the next one. Let's go to the next one, which is uh, them petting the dogs. And then the next one here being Sky News reporting that the Australians murdered 10 puppies. They shot five adult dogs and then killed 10 puppies oh, because... I just can't get over it. The risk of COVID. And meanwhile, <laughs> you've got the Taliban posting, now nah, we pet our dogs, even though they're haram. Yeah. The Prophet didn't like them, <laughs> whatever. I don't know. But like they... they... So obviously a fantastic optics victory. I mean, I don't doubt that <sighs> after they took those photos, the Taliban just shot the dogs, you know. Like they are literally those sorts of people. But at the end of the day, you're allowing them to dunk on us completely. Stop it. There is no evidence of them shooting him there. No, I know, I know. If I'm they being do, hyperbolic. But the point mm. is they're the sort of people who wouldn't think twice about it. Mm. And apparently so are the Australians. Also the criticism of everything in the West being covered in rainbow colours. Let's go to the next one. Remember they shot puppies because of COVID, but yet cops... Imposing a brutal lockdown in Sydney, West, are caught throwing a party at the police station for LGBTQIA awareness. And David Raboy making the good point. Uh, let's not get carried away. Can't let uh, lockdowns interfere with the state religion. And he's right. It is a state religion. We can scroll down here just to see the images as well, as you can see. The state religion carries on. Puppies murder them because spread of COVID. But in the office at the police station, that's for a party. Why? I bet the Taliban are thrilled that their enemies are such ridiculous farces. It's so easy for them. This is what I mean. Like, they've yeah. been on the internet five minutes, and yet they're better at memeing... Uh, this is what we've got to address. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're better at memeing than the entire left, but that's not hard. <laughs> no. But they're also better at memeing than some of the right, and it's like... It, it, <clears throat> this is only because the West is so weak. Yeah. And uh, another example of the state religion. Let's go to the next one. Uh, Ford did a thing that no one asked for. <laughs> 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 Ford, Ford Europe, verified checkmark. You asked hashtag Ford to make a hashtag very gay raptor a reality. Did we? Who? Name them. Did we? Do I, I want to know the name. <laughs> like, I bet there isn't one. Mm, John Smith, we swear. So Pride Flag, our real life version, made its debut in Cologne Pride last week in its rainbows adorned glory. I don't think anyone asked for this. And as you can see, they've also not gone with the normal, traditional, conservative pride flag. They went with the transracial one with separate but equal segregated black and brown stripes to represent the separate but equal the black and brown The race theory queers. pride flag, yes. Mm. Yeah. I mean, then we just have some of the absurdities going out of the fact that we don't even believe in rights anymore in the West. I mean, we don't even have this on them. Because, I mean, look at Australia, shoe posting mm -hmm. here, hey, yo, what the F? And this is the quote from The Atlantic. People in South Australia will be forced to download an app that combines facial recognition and geolocation. The state will text them at random times, and thereafter, they will have 15 minutes to take a picture of their face in the location where they are supposed to be. Should they fail, the local police department will be sent to follow up in person. Just say the Taliban, as a, an oppressive authoritarian regime, are probably not as oppressive and authoritarian as Australia has become. Because they don't have that technology. No. So it's weird. It's like watching two Nazis argue over the color of their flags. Mm. It's like, yeah, well, you know, you. I mean, like literally from the liberal position, they're both cancer. I can't stand either. We not just have British flag. Yeah, could that be? Could that be yeah, that, I that mean, be bring it? back the goddamn empire if that's where we're going with this. You Ugh. know what I mean? And okay, Australia is an authoritarian place, as Helen Dale explained, with the fact that they are the descendants of the. But clearly, they need remote rule from Britain to tell them how a country should be run. So do the Americas. Of course. So go to the ACLU. <laughs> so oh. the ACLU have also forgotten what rights are. Oh, yeah. Far from compromising them, vaccine mandates actually further civil liberties. If the state can't inject you with a with a vaccine, then you're you're not free. You don't have civil rights. The American Civil Liberties Union. Unbelievable. They have fallen so far. And then I just wanted to, to go to the next one on this, which is the last thing, just to also point out how weak we are at just advocating our own worldview as a civilization because we have abandoned the liberal or conservative standards and instead have gone for the state religion. Um, this is our, our favorite punching bag, I must be honest. <sighs> this is, uh, I can't remember her name now, it's completely escaped. Claudia me. Webb. Claudia Webb. Claudia Webb asking the government, what are we doing to set up LGBT safe zones 
within Taliban-controlled Afghanistan. Let's play the clip. Well, quickly, just on the issue of in inclusivity and the issue of minorities, what work is being done with the UN to create safe zones within Afghanistan uh, for religious minorities, for uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, uh, plus others communities? Um, what is being done to keep people safe? We already know that inclusivity, as far as the Taliban government is concerned, will not include um, uh, those groups. Look at his face. Dominic Rob's what face. Is, what a stupid question. What a moronic thing to say. Yeah. What he, are we doing to set up LGBT safe zones in Taliban controlled Kabul? Nothing is the answer to that, Claudia. I mean, like, <laughs> collaborators are currently being shot in their own homes by the Taliban. Nothing is being done by the British because essentially it would require us to be returned to empire. This would be, you know, the third British invasion of Afghanistan. So we're going to run over, but I want to do this segment as well in the end. Just this is a good segment. And they, they, God, God. God damn it. I'm just so annoyed that the sort of conservative, like, Western position, right, has been completely collapsed in on itself. And now you've got these, you know, Islamic radicals and the woke Taliban going at it on social media. And the only thing that the woke Taliban have to say is, why aren't the Taliban being inclusive? Well, because they're the fucking Taliban. Yeah. It's like, what are we doing about it? Nothing. We've just retreated from the country. Why are you bringing that up? Oh, God. Anyway. Insufferable. Insufferable. We are losing the information war. We absolutely are. Our messaging is not on point. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters, you can go to prelotuseaters.com and get access to all our premium content. Things like our book club, where we examine classics like Aldous Huxley's Brave New World and examine the themes that underpin it. And now we're getting worryingly close to that. Or modern books like Mark Sidwell's The Long March, which is how exactly we ended up in the current cultural situation we're in and what conservatives can do about it. Or you can check out the other series we have, such as our Contemplation series, where uh, Hugo and Josh decided to to, in the light, latest one, have a look at uh, an examination on the ways that other elections have been rigged for no reason at all. Or you can check out our Epoch series, which is one of my personal favourites, because this is where I get to talk about history. And I love I love talking about just random things from history. And one of the great things we can do with this series is talk about those things that aren't so often discussed. So, I mean, you can talk about Xerxes' army, the vast army that invaded uh, Greece during the Greek Greco-Persian Wars. Or we can go through things like Herodotus's view on the Scythians. Uh, who are they? You probably don't know, but they used to be quite an important people a long time ago, and they're very, very interesting. We've got some really good reports about them. Or we've got premium podcasts, which is things we generally don't want to put outside of the paywall because we might get in trouble for them, such as the list of things that Alex Jones was right about. Uh, or we do just very interesting discussions because there are things that we do lots of work on. Uh, another one is that I'm particularly proud of is where Christopher Hitchens, the famous new atheist, would have fallen during the modern culture wars because he probably wouldn't have been very woke. But uh, we also have lots of interviews and articles and other things on the website that you can sign up to enjoy, and uh, we th we're really proud of them. So if any of that sounds good to you, go over to lotuses.com and sign up for as little as £5 a month to support us, keep the show going, and also to get access to all the content. Thank you and goodbye.